Hello and welcome to this Adobe InDesign tutorial. Um, today I'm going to talk about the styles of objects. Um, in a previous um, tutorial we talked about um, the styles for paragraphs and, and for the text and character and, and how you can use that and how useful those are. Now, there's a really, really nice feature in, uh, in Adobe InDesign that uh, people don't use too often, as I, um, as I noticed, um, or sometimes they don't even know about it, is the style of objects. So this tutorial is actually going to be really short, but um, uh, it's the main purpose of this is just to show you how uh, interesting this tool can be. So, say you have a... Uh, a specific block. Uh, I'm just going to make a, a, a block of text. There we go, and I'm just going to uh, fill it with um, placeholder text like that. There we go. Um, so, um, why don't I go ahead and, and pretend I'm writing an article. There we go. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make a few columns. There we go. And let's say I want to add a, <clears throat> a quote in the middle of my article right here. Uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, there we go. I'm going to add again some text uh, and I'm going to quote it. There we go. <clears throat> now, my, um, just for uh, making it look all nice and shiny, there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and <clears throat> do it like this. So the purpose right now that I have is just to put a um, uh, a quote in the middle of my columns here. I'm just going to make that a two column document. There we go. Now I want here my quote to appear in the middle of those two. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a um, text wrap option. Okay, the purpose of this tutorial is not to go over all those things. Uh, I've actually already made tutorials about all that, so I strongly suggest that you go ahead and check them out if you don't know how to use those tools that I'm using right now. Um, there we go. So, <clears throat> I'm going to center this text here in the middle. There we go, and I'm going to make this actually a little bit bigger there, and I'm going to make my text float in the middle of my uh, block, and I'm going to give it some inset spacing, something like this. All right, guys, so if you don't know how to create this, I am... Um, really strongly advise you to uh, just go ahead and uh, and check out my tutorials. Now let's say that, uh, well I've already specified a whole bunch of things here for my, my block. Um, I've specified a text frame or text wrap sorry, uh, option, I've specified an inset spacing, text inside has got a whole bunch of um, specifics but it's, it's um, the object that matters right now. So let's say that I want to give my block uh, a color. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and go here. I don't have many colors here as standard, so I'll just go ahead for the, the one I have. <clears throat> there we go. Something like that, you might not like it, and that would be perfectly understandable. Um, so, I'm just going to give it, say, a drop shadow effect, but I'm going to make it look a little more natural, maybe. Something like this. There we go. <clears throat> so, let's say that I'm really happy about this. Um, now, wouldn't it be very useful to be able throughout my whole layout to repeat what I've just done automatically? Now, obviously, you always have the possibility of um, uh, copy-paste any item that you want to, but um, let's say that, uh, well, let's actually make an example. I'm just going to 
copy my whole page here. So you see, I've got. I'm just gonna put a, an immense two here. So we see what the deal is. There we go. So this is well page number two. And where it doesn't appear, it's just the other page, right? So <clears throat> now, um, obviously, uh, it's very easy to copy paste any item. But if I m make up my mind afterwards, uh, or if my boss or my client makes up his mind, um, once I've, I've presented the project and tells me, all right, well, you know, um, the, the quote here it looks all, all fine and dandy but I don't like the color and the drop shadow effect is just won't do it for me <clears throat> um, so you would have to go ahead and select uh, each and every block and manually modify that um, and, and then copy paste again or whatever fiddling around again um, <clears throat> So I, I really don't advise you to do that. Now, what I would advise you to do is to create a style for your block. And so if you go to Window, Styles, <coughs> Object Styles, there we go. So um, you see that there are none, basic graphics frame, basic text frame. Um, so those come uh, just like that within uh, Adobe InDesign. Now, if I want to create a style for objects, it's very easy. Just like with text or paragraph, I select my object and I just click on create new style. There we go. Now, as for the text or paragraph, my object doesn't have its style attributed to it yet. I just need to click once more on it and there we go. So it has now this uh, attribute and you see that now because when I click on it, it goes to object style number one. Obviously, if I double click on it, I can give it another name. I'll just go for quote. Uh, just like for the text size, there's a, a keyboard shortcut I can give it to as well if I want to. Um, but now I'll just go ahead and click OK. So this um, uh, block has got the attribute quote in uh, object styles. Now if I go to page number two, here we go. See, it has, it doesn't have that. Um, now, if I go back to page number one, so my client didn't like the color. Let's say I'm just going to go ahead and create a new color for him. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go to my swatches panel and I'm just going to create a red, like so, and he didn't like the drop uh, shadow effect. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and create another color and I'm going to go for blue green or diamond or gem there we go <clears throat> so I've, got, I've created my other colors now I'm going to go back to um, did I make it disappear? bad idea object styles there we go oh, there it was um, and instead of manually modifying this, I'm just going to modify the, um, uh, my object style. So I double click. So I make sure that nothing is selected. I double click on quote. There we go. And the color. So I'm going to go to, go to the fill. And I'm going to give it a red color now. So if I click on preview. I'll just see what uh, what that gives me. Now it's a tint of 22%. Let's say I'm just going to go. There we go for why not 100%. And the drop shadow effect uh, he didn't like. So I'm just going to go for maybe not drop shadow, but outer glow. There we go, outer glow. And in the colors, I'll select my gem color. And you can start, I don't know if you can see it, but it starts appearing here. So the purpose is actually not to go for a super cool effect, but just to show you how interesting this can be uh, to use. And I'm just going to go ahead and validate this. Now, page number one, page number two. Right? So this uh, is the change that I made. <clears throat> and I, I made it directly in the styles. Now, 
very easy for me to modify this one according to my new set of um, uh, parameters and I'll just go ahead and click on it and click on quote and there we go it follows exactly the same specifications uh, as for the previous block now again if I um, my client doesn't like the color but he likes the glowing effect say the color is too strong whatever uh, I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down and validate. So my quote um, style has been modified and all the objects that correspond to it will be automatically modified. So you can create as many styles as you want for the object. Um, I think it's it's just really uh, easy to use and I uh, if you have a layout with various pages, uh, a report that, um, that you are working on or uh, any document with multiple pages um, certainly uh, on that occasion I strongly advise for you to use the styles uh, for characters and, and and paragraph but certainly for objects as well all right well good luck for that and I'll see you in the next tutorial <laughs>